Hey, good morning. I'm Diana in communications for American Dairy Association Northeast. On behalf of our organization and the 3,000 dairy farm families of New York State, welcome to the official unveiling of the 56th annual American Dairy Association Northeast Butter Sculpture here at the Great New York State Fair. This year's sculpture is sponsored by Wegmans. In just a moment, you'll hear from our special guests. I'd also like to acknowledge our New York State Dairy Ambassador team, New York State Dairy Ambassador Evelyn Kirschman, Associate Dairy Ambassadors Olivia Maslin and Justin Mesh. We appreciate the work they do all year as ambassadors for the dairy industry. After remarks, we'll unveil the sculpture and have plenty of time for photos and interviews. It is now my pleasure to introduce the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets Commissioner, Richard Ball. Thank you so much. It's great to be with everybody again, and great to be here. I have to tell you, this is a pretty good day to be the Commissioner of Agriculture in New York State. Um, special thank you to all our partners to make this come together, from our partners at American Dairy Association Northeast, to Wegmans, and to the sculptors who did the work for us, Jim and Marie, great to have them be back here, and of course our dairy farmers, and you're going to hear from uh, our friend, the McMahon family, in just a little bit. And also, more importantly, the next generation of agriculture leadership that's here uh, with us today. Um, this unveiling is really become an iconic tradition here at the Great New York State Fair. And it shines a pretty nice spotlight, well deserved so, on our dairy industry. As a lot of you know, and I say this every year, uh, my passion for farming began when I was just a kid. And that left a, a big impression on me. And I knew then that I wanted to have my own farm when I, when I grew up, still working on growing up. But more importantly, dairy continues to be a backbone of our dairy industry. It's the biggest agricultural commodity we have in New York State and contributes in such a significant ways to our economy. And uh, we've got some of the best farmers in the country right here in New York State. And together they make about 16 billion pounds of milk every year. At the department, we also know how nutritious our milk and dairy products are. We know how critical they are to our economy and our community. And through programs like Nourish New York, Farm to School, New York Grown and Certified, we work every day at the department to make sure that New Yorkers of all ages can access these fresh and nutritious products. Our dairy farmers take their work and their way of life pretty seriously. Sustainability has become a pretty common term for our times these days, but that's something that our farmers think about every single day. How to leave the animals they care for, the land and the water they work with, how to leave that farm better for the next generation uh, is something that all our farmers think about every day. They produce our fresh, healthy products, and for us, they do it with great environmental stewardship as well. So we're hard at work on what's new and next for the dairy industry. Uh, we hold regular meetings with the Milk Marketing Advisory Council and the Dairy Think Tank, as well as working with the New York State Dairy Promotion Order Board. And that advisory board helps us think about new and innovative uses for dairy products and keeps us fresh. So I'm pretty pleased that the butter sculpture, which is seen by close to a million people every year here, everyone who walks through this building gets a chance to take a look at that, highlights New York's largest agricultural sector and plays, pays tribute to our farmers and processors who work very hard to nourish us and our communities. This is always a fun day for me. Thank you for sharing it with me. And I can't wait to see what you're going to see in just a moment. So with that, let me turn it back over to Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ball. It is now my pleasure to introduce the State Fair Director, Julie LaFay, to the podium. Good morning. Thank you, Diana. Oops, sorry. Good morning, thank you for having me. 
We are now fewer than 24 hours from opening day here at the Great New York State Fair. Can we just cheer that? <laughs> We're proud to kick things off with one of the most anticipated events of the year, the unveiling of the 50th annual Butter Sculpture. Like all of you, I love the allure surrounding the Butter Sculpture. I want to thank the American Dairy Association Northeast for giving us such a fun tradition. Thank you to Evelyn Ingram uh, and Wegmans for sponsoring this exhibit, and to our amazing sculptors Jim Victor and Marie Pelton, who are celebrating their 21st year set crafting these masterpieces at the fair. Thank you. Many of our time-honored traditions at the fair, like the butter sculpture, accentuate the hard work, talent, and importance of our dairy farmers and producers. We're thrilled to be able to showcase that work and shine a light on our dairy industry and New York agriculture. And if your mind is churning and you're wondering what you'd look like in butter form, the wildly popular butterizer filter on Instagram is back. We have it right here and right there. By scanning a QR code, which can be found on the State Fair map and interactive kiosks throughout the fair, you can superimpose your own face onto a butter bust. Fairgoers are encouraged to share those results on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtags New York NYS Fair and Butterize Me. Again, my gratitude to everyone who helps make the butter sculpture possible. We can't wait to celebrate the very best of New York with all of you at this year's fair. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. We're pleased to have Wegmans as a sponsor of the Butter Sculpture once again. So welcome, Evelyn Ingram, Director of Community Relations for Wegmans Food Markets. Good morning, everyone. It's so great to have this opportunity to speak with you this morning. It's been uh, about a year, I think, since we've seen everyone in this capacity. And during that year, Wegmans has provided many different levels of support to our community, including scholarships for youth, helping those who don't have food, providing food for them, providing shelter for those, and just a variety of different things that we do to support the community. And I was listening. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I was thinking this morning about how many years have we been a sponsor of the Butter Sculpture, and I think it goes way beyond my capacity because we realize that this initiative just is a staple for the New York State Fair, and we're hoping that just as people who come to the fair want to come to see the Butter Sculpture, that synonymous with that is healthy eating and people want to come purchase, make their purchases at Wegmans for healthy food. But for us, our priority is to make a difference in every community that we serve. And we see that this is an opportunity for us to bring people together, for us to recognize the importance of healthy eating, healthy living. And again, we hope that Wegmans will continue to support such an important endeavor, recognizing that us coming together as a community is what makes a difference. So we look forward to seeing you next year. And again, Wegmans is proud to be a sponsor of this. And we hope that we will continue to see initiatives like this that have such an impact on our community. See you next year. Thank you, Evelyn. This is the 22nd consecutive year that our talented sculptors, Jim Victor and Marie Pelton, have created the butter sculpture here at the New York State Fair. While Marie couldn't be here this morning, Jim is joining us to talk about their work with 800 pounds of butter. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, Marie and I are pleased to be part of this annual tradition. Uh, we've created the last 22 butter sculptures here at the fair, and at the New York State Fair. It's one of the best kept secrets here, and it keeps people interested, and, and it's an exciting lead up to the fair. It makes fun for us too. We know we are creating sculptures that are entertaining, tell a story, and pay tribute to the New York's hardworking dairy farmers. This year took us 11 days on site to construct it and a lot of work to take pla took place even before that, even before we arrived here at the fairgrounds. The story of butter used is one of sustainability. The sculpture was created from 800 pounds of butter that is unsuitable for sale and consumption for a variety of reasons. We work with the American Dairy Association Northeast to put it to good use by creating a hopeful, beautiful piece of art that thousands will envy, enjoy. 
Then after the fair, the butter sculpture will be deconstructed and travel to a dairy farm in western New York to be recycled in a methane digester to create new renewable energy. And I also wanted to say that Marie isn't here today because she's starting another fair in Rhinebeck at the Dutchess County Fair today. So, and I will be joining her later today. So at that, I'm gonna turn it back to Diana. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. It is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker representing the state's dairy farmers. Mike McMahon spent decades managing a 2,300-acre dairy farm located in an environmentally sensitive area. In fact, 70% of his farmland lies within the northern part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed, while the remaining 30% is in the Skinny Atlas Lake watershed, which provides drinking water to over 220,000 people in and around the city of Syracuse. Mike and the team at Easy Acres have been recognized for their exceptional efforts in protecting these local watersheds, including the trout streams that run through the property. Their commitment to environmental sustainability and animal welfare has earned them several prestigious awards. Easy Acres became the first farm in New York State to receive an animal welfare certification from the New York State Cattle Health Assurance Program. They were also honored as the Skinny Atlas Lake Watershed Protection Farm of the Year. In 2018, Easy Acres received a national award for outstanding dairy farm sustainability from the Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy. And they received an Environmental Stewardship Award in 2021 from the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. With that, let's welcome dairy farmer Mike McMahon. Thank you, Diana, and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> dairy farming is much more than just about taking care of the cows. It's also about taking care of the land and cherishing that, the land that we need to grow the crops to feed those cows. I'm Mike McMahon. My farm is about 35 miles south of here in the town of Homer. And I've been actively farming for actually 60 years. Uh, I remember when I was 12 years old, I got promoted from feeding calves to milking cows. As Diana mentioned, Easy Acres is situated over the, uh, over the uh, or in the watershed that's very crucial to this community. Hundreds of thousands of people depend on the water from Skinny Atlas Lake for their drinking water. And it also provides a wonderful recreational retreat for those families. We also operate over the sole source aquifer for the town of Homer and the city of, Sir or city of Cortland. So there's another 30,000 people that depend on us to do things right. Protecting the water quality is not just important to us, but it's essential to what we do. At Easy Acres, we're deeply committed to being good neighbors and good stewards of the land. And a few of the things that we've done to keep this water clean, over the years, in cooperation with the Department of Environmental Conservation and the help of the kids from the 4-H Teen Council, we have planted thousands of willow shrubs along the banks of the two trout streams that run through our farm for about eight miles. <clears throat> We've done that to not only stabilize the banks of the streams to be able to control erosion going into the water, but also a second purpose is to shade the water and keep it healthier and cooler during the warm weather for the fish and wildlife that live in those streams. Another thing that we've done is we've established uh, generous wide buffers around the streams to act as filters between the land that we uh, grow our crops on and those streams. And another thing that we have done well, back in the mid-90s uh, as the case study farm for Cornell University, we began, we began a voluntary well and stream sampling project which we continue to this day. Every three months we pull samples from a number of wells in the down through the aquifer and the two streams and check for the levels of nitrates and phosphorus to make sure that our agronomic practices are sound. 
We were the first farm in the U.S. to be able to drop our phosphorus levels by over 30% on our farm. Sustainability is not just a buzzword for us, but it's a way of life. We invest heavily in practices like this because our livelihood depends on a healthy environment. A few years ago, I was asked to speak at uh, Cobalt Skill uh, College at their seventh generation speaker series. I didn't really understand what that meant. I asked the executive director, and she said that the name of this program, which they hold annually, comes from the Iroquois who say that each generation has a responsibility to protect and preserve the goodness of the earth for the seventh generation beyond them. We like to think that we're doing that at Easy Acres. Back to you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Now I'd like to invite our guests to step in and prepare for the unveiling. Commissioner Ball, Julie Lefebvre, Jim Victor, Evelyn Ingram, Mike McMahon, and Evelyn Kirschman. And as they prepare to unveil, I'd like to remind you uh, again that the 800 pounds of butter you are about to see will be recycled after the fair. It will be deconstructed with assistance from the Cornell Cooperative Extension Master Gardeners and transported to Noblehurst Farms in Lidwood, New York, where it will be recycled in a methane digester to create renewable energy. Most time. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> there we go. The theme of this year's butter sculpture is dairy, good for you, good for the planet, highlighting one of the many ways dairy farmers protect the planet while producing nutritious milk. The butter sculpture depicts a family relaxing on the bank of a river on one side while showing a dairy farmer planting a tree on the other side. Every year, dairy farmers plant thousands of trees along rivers and streams that run through their farms to prevent soil erosion, improve water quality, and provide a natural habitat for wildlife. The sculpture includes a blue river, which helps make the connection between consumer enjoyment and responsible dairy production. That concludes our ceremony. Thank you for attending the unveiling of the 2024 American Dairy Association Northeast Butter Sculpture.